Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Asus ePad Slider, which is a 10-inch Android tablet with a 1 gigahertz dual-core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, 1 gig of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, and uh, a lot of the other features that you would expect from a Android tablet. Uh, this particular model is running Google Android 3.2 Honeycomb, and it was released uh, uh, earlier this year. The one thing that really sets it apart from others, though, is that it's a little bit thicker and heavier because it has a sort of two-part construction. Um, you can use it as a standard tablet by holding it in landscape or portrait mode, or you can put it down on a table, pull, and use it in a sort of laptop mode. Now, the laptop mode, this is not adjustable, so you're always sort of at a, an interesting angle here. Um, but it's got a nice solid base construction, which makes it actually uh, balance pretty well, so you can put it on your lap or a table and uh, use it for typing. Let's take a quick look around the device. It's got an uh, SD card slot or a micro SD card slot here, a button on the side, a dedicated reset button, which is kind of unusual. You can tap that. It's a little bit inset, so you won't hit it too easily, and it'll completely reset the tablet. Um, I mean, not completely factory reset, but it'll reboot. Uh, you've got volume buttons here and a power button and what I believe may be a microphone. Not much on this side. Over here we've got a full-size USB port and headphone jack. And on the top we've got an HDMI output and a docking port uh, for connecting a USB cable. On the back you can't really see it from that side, but on the back we've got a uh, camera with uh, no flash, it doesn't look like. And there's also a front-facing camera here at the top. Uh, in terms of size, it's uh, about uh, 2.1 pounds, which makes it light for a netbook, but kind of heavy for a tablet. Uh, by comparison, we've got here the HP touchpad which is a 9.7 inch tablet. You can see it does, uh, doesn't have quite as thick a bezel, bezel around the size. It's uh, not quite as long. And this weighs about 1.6, 1.7 pounds compared to uh, 2.1 pounds here for the Asus. Uh, or if you want to compare it with, say, a 7 inch device, the difference is pretty remarkable. Uh, we've got here a 7 inch Barnes & Noble Nook color, or actually a Nook tablet, or an Amazon Kindle Fire. So it's uh, fairly, fairly chunky. It's um, something that's, uh, well, you know, if you're going to sit on the couch and use it to read a book or watch a movie or do something like that, it might be okay. Um, but really the advantage to using this particular tablet is going to be if you want to use the laptop mode. Um, I'll show you some of the other features here. The keyboard is an island style or chiclet style keyboard, meaning that there's flat keys with a little bit of space in between each key. It's kind of cramped. Um, I find that I can touch type on it, but it's not the most pleasant touch typing experience I've had. So if you've seen, for instance, the ePad Transformer, which has an optional keyboard docking station as opposed to an included dock, it has much larger keys. Um, I would almost have preferred if instead of having number keys here on top, we just had larger keys so that you could uh, hit function and hit the top row for numbers, sort of the way that you do with an on Android on-screen keyboard. Uh, there are some special function keys, though. We've got the FN key, for instance, um, which you can hold down and press to toggle wireless, Bluetooth, uh, brightness, and other settings. There's page up and page down functions over here. And then we've also got the Android Home back and menu buttons uh, sort of coded right in here as well as a search button. In terms of the uh, software, in addition to Google Android 3.2, there's some custom applications from Asus, uh, including a cloud, system, a cloud service, a bookstore, um, and some other apps. You get a free trial of the press reader application for downloading newspapers and uh, you do get access to the Google Android Market and Google Maps and other Google software. Um, it syncs with your Google account if you have one, so I automatically downloaded and installed a number of applications that I've been using on my phone and on other tablets. Um, and it took a couple of minutes, and the tablet seemed kind of slow when I did the initial setup process, but that's pretty much par for the course. Um, once you get past that, the overall user experience is pretty good. It's uh, Some of the apps might make more sense on smaller handheld devices. So for instance, the Amazon Kindle application, I went ahead and fired up and uh, loaded some books. And you know, they look decent on the screen, I suppose, but it's um, 
kind of tough to read a book on a device that's as large as this in landscape mode, and then when you switch it to portrait mode, this is just a very kind of large, heavy device to be holding in portrait mode. So I'm not sure that I would necessarily recommend it for doing things like reading books, but if what you expect to be doing is um, typing documents, sending emails, um, or surfing the web, that experience is uh, pretty good here. So we've got a smooth uh, browser experience, we've got uh, the ability to open multiple tabs and switch back and forth between them. Um, you can even use keyboard shortcuts to do that to some degree. Uh, control tab seems to get you to the next one, but not back to the first one. So um, overall, it's a lot like using a laptop, but you're using Google Android instead of Windows, Linux, or OS X, or another operating system. Um, and that experience is uh, fairly fairly pleasant. There's no touchpad here on the keyboard, so you're going to need to reach up to uh, tap the screen if you want to um, affect certain actions. Um, but the fact that you've got those keyboard shortcuts for back and uh, menu and so forth is definitely helpful. Uh, we've got our recent apps button here. We've got our list of applications, uh, smooth transitions, and uh, overall, it's an interesting device. Um, I'll be testing it uh, some more over the next couple of days. I really just got a chance to uh, to start playing with it earlier today. And the uh, overall user experience is interesting because it's, uh, it's like using a Google Android tablet because that's what it is. But then it's also a little bit like using a notebook and um, where those two things sort of cross over is uh, is an interesting space and I'll be curious to see how it sort of fits into my regular uh, workflow. So uh, that's a first look at the... I'm not sure why it's showing a bunch of music that uh, I don't believe is actually in my account. Uh, some of these songs are in my account but some of them are not. Um, anyway, so it's... Um, connected to the Google Music application, and it's loading some songs, but not all of the songs in my account, apparently. Um, and, uh, oh, in terms of viewing angles, we've got a glossy screen here, but an IPS display, which means that from a wide angle, colors don't necessarily wash out and look pretty good. Uh, gonna look better indoors than outdoors, though, clearly because of that gloss. Um, so, again, first look at the Asus ePad slider. And I'll have more details and a complete review of this device uh, coming up soon. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.